Happy Mother's Day, ladies. I think Mother's Day is not just a day for mothers who, not just a day for mothers essentially, but a day for all women. Uh, women have, there is a, you know, we're in an age in, uh, where we have several, to some people, to others, to others, controversial views on transgender and these things. Uh, but let's just put that aside and look at the woman, the Sophia, the woman, the wisdom. And it's a day, however you identify yourself, if you identify yourself as a woman, you are a woman, then this day is for you. Because this day is a day that we honor women, specifically women who have given birth, women who uh, not just given birth, but have been a mother or are a mother to someone at some time. Because I believe that the sacred feminine is a part of the duality of such between men and women to where there is a difference. And while all men are created equal, we are not equal in the sense of who we are based on our sex. We're not. And so, not just biologically, but also uh, psychologically, spiritually. We're different. Especially while on the certain, I don't know, I believe, and this is not really an out there belief, but I think that outside of these physical bodies, you may possess both male and female. The great Sophia, God. If we are children of God, then we will become like God. We will be male and female, both. And I think that may be one of the issues when uh, people are born you know, in a male body, if they believe they're a female or vice versa, they were literally born in the wrong body. And to hold back their true self is telling someone to lie about who they actually are. Now that there's some arguments, and I agree with them as far as sports are concerned, but just like anyone who may have been born in a body that is not truly who they are, there may have to be, you know, some things that you may not be able to do to give actual birth or to fight in an MMA match with men or women, depending on what gender you uh, identify with or what gender you truly are spiritually. But I don't want to get into that too much, but I thought that it was important to address that issue a little bit. Uh, as I talk about this Mother's Day episode, because Mother's Day, this Mother's Day, and all Mother's Day is for all people, all, all women. Uh, and it's a day we honor the feminine. The nurturing abilities of a mother that have allowed us to grow and become who we are and those things we never forget. Not everyone has had great experiences with their mothers. Some, many people have lost their mothers. I look at my ex-wife, she's passed away. My son, uh, my son did not, has, does not have the experience to have a mother that, that birthed him. Although he has a great stepmother, he has a grandmother, but those are the things that now are he will not be able to he will not be able to see or hold his biological mother until that day comes and they see each other again in eternity. So when we celebrate motherhood, just as we celebrate fatherhood on Father's Day, it, we're celebrating essentially a part of God the wisdom part of God. It, and it's fitting. It's fitting to examine the Sophia. 
Because so many times we look upon God as this uh, old white bearded man and he's angry and he wants to destroy the earth all the time. When that's so far from the truth, generally we are the ones that perceive God that way and we are the ones that constantly destroy the earth. But the mother God, the Sophia, does not want to destroy the earth. The Sophia is the nurturing aspect of God, the nurturing and caring and allowing his, his, her children to grow and make mistakes, yet learn from those mistakes and become better people and better children. If we could grasp this is the great Sophia, I believe, of God, the great feminine of God, that many religions have. Christianity used to, in its origins, used to. It, it's later Chris, Roman Christianity that has cast off all of the other teachings that were before and chose to turn Christianity into this patriarchal type of religion that doesn't even resemble what Christianity should be. If we look at the Christianity today, it's not even really Christianity. It's, it's this set of rules and dogma and doctrines that we've created and established. And it's, it's not even, it's not, it's not the church Jesus wanted. But as we still pray to Jesus, as we still pray to God about being the church, we say we're the church, we realize that he still, God still, see, I always say God is he because we always address God as he. I think there's something to that point. Even Jesus addressed God the Father as the Father. But we created a doctrine of the Trinity and we have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And one thing that is striking is oftentimes Gnostics and other groups will look upon the Holy Spirit as the feminine, as the wisdom, as like the power of God. And that could be a very appropriate, uh, if you think about it, it could be very appropriate. I don't know. I don't think, like many things I say on this podcast, I don't know. I don't know if that's really true or not. I, I don't know. Just like the doctrine of the Trinity, we don't necessarily know if that's true. We don't know. You know, it, it was a man-created doctrine. It wasn't, you know, there was no burning bush experience and God told, you know, the writers or the ones who created the dogma that there's a holy trinity. You don't know that. It just, it, it, it felt right. You know, based on the text, it felt, you know what, I think this is it. You know, you're like, God is in three parts. You know, they're trying to figure out God. You're trying to, when you're trying to figure out, is Jesus a man? Is Jesus not a man? Was Jesus both a man and God? Uh, you know, be a superhero? You know, I just got done watching Aquaman. And, you know, <laughs> a good movie, by the way. Great movie. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. But the subject's so interesting. I don't even think I introduced myself. If, you're, if you clicked on this podcast, you already know who you're listening to. This is Nate's Bro. I call this podcast the Back Air Preacher Podcast, and it's constantly evolving. Sometimes I just like to jump on in. I used to do intros. I don't do intros anymore. I just jump on in and start talking to my friends, because you are all my friends. One of these days, I want to have a guest on here. Please, you want to be a guest in the Back Up Preacher podcast, and you got something, and you're inter an interesting person, and you got some great, cool stuff to say, we can even do it. Uh, we can even try to do it like through Skype or over the phone or something. I think that'd be cool. 
Uh, you know, it'd, it'd be cool if you could be here in person, but if not, whatever. Uh, email me, email me, let me know, people, let me know more topics. Keep on sending those topics in, please. Now, it's important. I want to know what you want to know, and I want to try to figure out what I don't know so I can spew it back out at you. Uh, so many of us have neglected the Sophia. The church has neglected the Sophia. The church has neglected the woman. The church has neglected the woman to such a great extent that the Roman church pretty much knew about everything that God and the early church had established with women, and women were a huge part of Jesus' ministry, but it was a patriarchal society, and there was no way the church found that there would be no way that they would actually have a chance of becoming the church within Roman society if they would allow women to actually play a major role. Or any role at all. Uh, they did not even want their women to speak. And this goes back as far as Paul. Some would debate that Paul was speaking to Romans and that he knew that their culture did not allow women to speak with authority or to speak over men and that it would be best to placate the social norms for the advancement of Christianity. And maybe at the time when you're thinking about it, maybe that's so true, or maybe it's not. I don't know. But it seems to be that that was the case. And we have ultra-conservatives who then believe that it's the case for all time because they take the scriptures so literally that they jack them up. Which is wrong. You can't do that. Stop in that, please. So what's best then is to try to look at the scriptures through the eyes of love, through the eyes of Jesus. Uh, and that would be looking upon women as the cornerstone of the church, as really the backbone of the church. Really, without the woman, without the great Sophia, there is no church. The male side, the dominant male side, without the balance, without the balance, we, it's, it's flawed. There needs to be a balance. And many churches today in our progressive movement have been able to find that balance somewhat. I know while we're on earth, it's going to be very difficult because we're still filled with all these weird emotions and whatever of being human. But you see women being ordained in great numbers today by denominations. You see women holding very senior leadership positions in organizations, churches, and parachurch organizations today. And then you have, you know, the very fundamentalists who believe still that women are not to speak in church. It's so weird. They should only be quiet at home. They can speak over children. That's about it. And it's so damaged us. It's damaged not only women damaged the church and for so long we have taken the beautiful aspect of the church and, and, and shut it out we essentially shut it out we need to allow the Sophia to reign back in again but we definitely need the balance of the male as well we can't allow Sophia has become so dominant that it, 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 we throw everything out and not hold on to the male either. We need a both. We need both. We need balance. Without the balance, 
were lost in one way or the other. That's all we need to try to hold on to. The king and the queen, so to speak. But today is the day for the feminine. Today is the day for the Sophia. Today is the day that we honor womanhood and honor the precious, precious sacrifice that women have always made for their children as mothers. And we love you for it. There's experiences that women can have that men can never have, that we will never be able to truly understand. We try to empathize, but we can't truly get it. We can't truly understand. We can't truly be uh, we can't be women. And it's a special thing. It's an honor. And we can honor each other. And if we learn how to honor each other, wow. We don't have to have a war on women. We don't have to have a war on men. If we learn how to honor each other, the man lies down his life for the woman, and the woman in turn lies down her life for the man. Both lying down in their life and no one dies. Both putting on their, taking off the swords and laying them down, saying, we are not at war, instead we are united. We are not here to fight, we are here to unite. This is a great mystery. If you look at the world as it is right now, America has come a long way. America is a shining light and a shining beacon when it comes to uh, genders united. Now you have many people in this country who have uh, said that we are, you know, like the worst of the worst. No, we're not. Okay, we're not. We're actually really good. I mean, there's countries that are good as well. Europe and, you know, Canada, of course. Canada's like cool at everything. Uh, they're like enlightened people, I'm telling you. They're like, they're like the people of the lost Atlantis. Uh, but America tries. We try. But we have constant fighting on both sides. But we try. I mean, I, you know, you go to, do, you, do women have the same rights? in China as they do here in the United States, to, especially if you go to the Middle East, duh. You know, we, you go to the Middle East, women have no rights. They have no rights. They have to be dressed in garb from head to toe. They don't have rights, you know. And I know, I know that, you know, I, I respect Muslims and uh, I respect, you know, what their belief system uh, but, come on, if you're raised that way, you probably don't know any other way that you probably don't want to do, you probably don't want to be that. You mean, you may, I don't know, I mean, you may want to, I don't know. But it just seems, and I know it's an ancient thing, it's an ancient thing, you know, uh, it's the way women have dressed and, you know, for thousands and thousands of years in the Middle East. Very much so. Uh, one of the reasons why, when you read in the Bible about certain incidences, like when uh, Jacob was uh, promised the two sisters, uh, oh man, I can't, I can't even think of the name of Sarah. Jacob's two sisters. You know, this is, this is why I need to read my Bible more in depth. Hold on. I'll find it. Yeah. 
Jaga, Rachel, and Leah. So, well, obviously we know that he was tricked by his uncle and he married the oldest one first as tradition, but kind of like, how in the world would he get married to a woman and then have sex with her and then not know it was the wrong one? Like, that doesn't make sense. Well, it makes sense in the early world. I mean, when a woman wouldn't even get undressed. Just undressed enough for her and him to have sex with her. That's it. But, like, still underneath all those robes. So when she finally did the robe, realized that, whoa, dude, I just uh, consummated this marriage and didn't even know who you were. That's how it happened. And that, you know, and that still carries on in the Middle Eastern world, although uh, Christianity had much of that as well. Uh, I think a lot of people need to understand when it comes to women and women's rights in the Middle East and in, in lots of in religious worlds of the Middle East, uh, because you even talk about some Orthodox Jews and they're the same way. You know, I always like to look at it this way. Christianity, in a, in, in a sense, is 600 years n older than Islam. So we're a lot more liberal, we're a lot more progressive in, in, compared to fundamental uh, Muslims. In 600 years from now, we may have a wholly diff totally different Islamic religion. Totally different. Uh, and that's because over the years, you know, they became more uh, liberal and open-minded and actually started reading their Bible, their, their text, with uh, more exegesis and hermeneutical uh, science. It's interesting. It's interesting. But, you know, as an American, you do feel for, you know, your first thought when you think about you know, the Middle East and women, you think, man, they're, they're, they're subjected to so much. But, you know, if, if that's all you know, if, if that's all you know, then essentially they're not being treated badly. They, they don't know any better. Uh, but that doesn't always make it right. You know, you could say you could make the same argument in America with slavery. Well, they're always a slave; they don't know any better. Well, it just still doesn't make it right, uh, and it doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it right in the Middle East. It doesn't make it right here in the United States. It doesn't make it right anywhere. Uh, women have rights, and even in the United States, we try to impose. Man tries to impose his laws upon women in the abortion issue. Uh, you know, I'm with, I stand with women, and I am in I'm in an odd place because I'm both pro-life and pro-choice. I look at it this way: for me personally, I I take a pro-life stance. You know, especially after six weeks, I believe that. Just as Jewish tradition, after a month, ensoulment has probably taken place, and that you know you should not be having an abortion after that. But I know I'm not the woman; I, it's not my body, and I want to give full rights to the woman, full rights to her to make that decision, because it's not my decision to make. You know, I can have an opinion, and it's okay to have an opinion, but if we want to live peacefully amongst each other, and if we want to allow the woman to have full rights over her own body, then we need to allow her to make those decisions on her own. Not going to get into a huge abortion debate, but there you go. I mean, it's, it's that simple. I just solved it. I just solved it. You can believe be both pro-life and pro-choice. You can be. I'm, I consider myself pro-life, but people would, fundamentals would say, oh, you're pro-choice because you would, you would let a woman do whatever they want. Well, I'm not, who am I to say they're thinking, who am I? 
Who am I to say anything to any one about any one else's body? Not, I'm not their judge. I'm not their ruler. What, just because it's been that way in the past doesn't mean it has to be that way in the future. Honor your mother. The Bible does say, honor your mother and father in the days you belong on the earth. Honor your mother and father. It's important today, and not just today, it's important every day. It's important every day to step back and say, thank you for raising me the way you did. And it may not have been great either. You know, everybody's situation is different. Some, on, on Mother's Day, this is a day that a lot of people want to forget. Maybe they lost their mother early, maybe their mother abandoned them, maybe their mother abused them. This is what I say to that, I'm sorry for that. Probably though, somewhere, and it may not have been your biological mother, you had a, a woman, a female figure in your life that acted motherly towards you. So it's not just really, Mother's Day is not just really about the biological woman. It's the spirit of motherhood. The spirit of Sophia. That's really what it's all about. And we can celebrate that because it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to have that spirit and that spirit alive and well in our world. And we need to celebrate it more. Just as we celebrate the male, we also celebrate the female. I hope everyone had a fabulous Mother's Day. I hope our mothers have been blessed. I hope you are blessed and allow mother figures in your life, no matter how old you are, how young you are, who you are, allow yourself to be nurtured because that's what mothers do. God bless. This is Nate Sproke, the Backyard Preacher. Thanks for listening. If you like this podcast, please share this podcast. If you think I'm a total nut and you're like, I would never, I don't ever want to listen to you again, you can share it and just make fun of me. That's fine. I don't care. Good publicity, bad publicity, it's publicity. All right. So anyway, I will catch you next Sunday, because that's kind of when we do these things. Um, and on, I don't know what we'll talk about. So I don't think it's a holiday next Sunday. Uh, I think we're going to double up on some episodes here in the coming weeks, because headed to sunny Florida, not this coming weekend, but the following weekend, and spend almost a week down there and have a good time. So I'll be there on that Sunday. Maybe we'll have to do a double header. Uh, anyway, God bless, and Nate says, signing out, and I love you. God bless.